Hi y'all, it's Michael from Connor again, it's me Michael. So uh, tonight I'm doing my filming out of my barn. As you can see, this is my girl right here, this is Joy. Say hi, Joy. Hi. 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 Oh yeah. I got a kissy. It's okay, lady. I'm available. But um, tonight, I'm going to be finishing out my last pinch of the Copenhagen Original. Because I just had a little bit less shakes. I didn't really get a chance to do a lot today because... I'm busy at work and, and we were just slammed down there and I just never had a chance to get any in. I don't know. So this video is kind of like picking up where my other one left off, you know. Just giving you a little bit more about me so you can, I guess, get to know me. Oh yeah. Give me a nice old big country here. Ooh, damn. I'd like to finish that one. So morning. Yeah, buddy. We got me a big old pinchy tonight. But, um. Yeah. Uh, There's a three finger one. That's how big it is. There we go. But, um, well, a little bit more about myself. Damn it. I'm 19 years old. Um, I live in Ohio. Uh, I'm a senior in high school, as I already said. Uh, I did, like, I don't know how many years before age. That's how I guess. We've had horses since before I was born. I mean, the old guy over there, his name's Bulldozer. He's 31 years old. My mom's had him since he was three. She's had him longer than my dad. But, um, so, yeah, I show horses and everything. I did a lot of 4-H, and she's a registered AQHA quarter horse. She's, I mean, all the horses in this barn are registered. I got, she's a quarter horse. Those are over there is a quarter horse. I have a miniature over there. He's actually a miniature world champion and a bunch of stuff. His name's Chase. We got my buddy over there. He's a paint. His name's Scout. Oh god, he's gorgeous. Um, actually, his breeding when we first bought him and his buddy, just alone when they were stud, no training or anything, they were ten grand a piece. I mean, he's got boat aces. He's got a bunch of crap in there. Uh, crap, what I can't remember what else. I, it's been so long to look at his papers. Then we got his buddy Pally, which is a sixteen three hand Palomino paint. He's got smart chicolina and all that in him. Like they're both proper cutting. Then we have Piper, my mom's very first man that she ever got. She's actually Chase's full sister. And then we have Nestle, breeding stock paint. Uh, I think you'll like all my horses plenty as you can. But uh, with her, I show Western Pleasure. And two years ago, I started in English trick. I haven't had really any time to ride much this year just because I've been so slammed with work. And I'm too old to do 4-H now. So I'm an advisor, so that's why she's going on a big circuit. And um, my great granddad actually sent her up to my friend's place because they got a big indoor, indoor riding arena. And she's kind of like my trainer type thing. I mean, she's not a trainer or anything, but she's really helped me out with it because the background I came from with the old guy over there was um, contesting, trail, and all that. But this was like. I went to Western Pleasure and all that years ago. I've done dressage, I've done jumping, I've done English. I mean, I do all of it, but, you know, no matter how good you are at something, and this applies to anything in life, you are never the best. There's nothing you can't learn. You never know everything. So it's good to go back and get that training stuff because, you know, you might know, okay, say we're talking about this can dip right here, this Copenhagen. You might know a lot more about dipping than some you know, person who dips. Um, and... You might have a lot more experience with it, but they might know something about it that you don't know. So, you know, if somebody tries to help you something, actually listen to them. I'm kind of going off topic with it, but, um, I want to be a firefighter. That's my career goal, because my dad's been a firefighter since the 70s. I mean, I've been on the fire department for four years now. I went through the cadet program, which is like ROTC for the fire department. Um, right now I'm like in between becoming a volunteer firefighter and that I'm like a trainee because what's going on is I cannot sit the state test for my fire card until I have my diploma in my hand 
Like, I can go through the class and everything else, I just can't test till then. So, yeah. Um, I used to be a mechanic, but that's, that's not the only time I've ever worked with my hands on any kind of mechanical stuff. Me and my dad, we were at drag race. My whole family's been drag racing since before I was born. Um, I've worked my way up from junior dragsters to, I had a Ford truck last year that I was, that was my daily driver and driving it on the track, but it ended up snapping the cam in half, and so I swapped engines to a 289 Hypo, because it originally had a 302 in it, that was pretty nice. With that Hypo, God, it had some god-awful torque in it, I mean, that thing would light them up. I mean, it was three on the tree, which a lot of you people, if you don't know what that is, it's, it's a stick, like it's a manual that you actually shift, but instead of it being on the floor, it was on the column, and there's three gears, and it was like, down and back is first, up and away is second, and then down and away is third. That thing was fun to drag race, especially because people would come out there and like, Man, I tell you what, man, when I was watching you, I just saw you going slamming those gears into it. Now I need your gears. But I wouldn't want to race a three on the tree again, because I ended up getting rid of the truck, because it ended up spending a bang on that 289. Because I bought that 289, didn't go through it, I was in a hurry, and I didn't have money, so I didn't have money to go through it. And that was stupid on my part, I should have just waited, because I, ha I had a truck I was driving at the time, I should have just waited and put the money in it. But uh, that engine went kaput, and I was just like, you know, uh, I'm tired of dumping money in this truck. I already had, I paid like $800 for it, and I had dropped about four or five grand in it. So, I had a truck recently, the truck that I was driving at the time, because when I first blew the engine in that Ford, drag racing, um, I, my parents bought me a Dodge Ram off of the lady who's actually, a, like, who helps me with her, her husband, because her husband and my dad have been veterans for like 30 years. And so I bought that off of him. And then I fixed up the Ford, went back to the Ford, then when we got rid of the Ford, I went back to the Dodge. Well, I traded the Dodge now for a Cutlass, and it was like a 3.8 V6 Cutlass, you know, and everything else. And I bought it for a couple of reasons. I bought it because it was a car for cheaper insurance, um, and it had a V6, so it was getting a lot better fuel mileage, because that thing was getting like 30-something miles to the gallon. Well, when I bought it, the guy was just like, oh, it just needs a fluid and filter change. Because everything he described that was wrong with the transmission, because it wasn't shit from the first or second, was a fluid and filter change. And my plan was, it was while I was driving that around, I'd take my time and really build up a nice Chevy 350 for it. Well, I got home and found out it had a broken motor mount on it. Um, it had, originally the, somebody had airbags on it. And they put the springs back in, well, they heated up the springs, took them out, so the whole right side just low because they took the hot torch to it uh, when they took them out. So I got to get new springs for it, but, um, ended up, the transmission was toast. It was TV cable, the output shaft, and stuff, and everything else, broken motor mount. And, you know, when I was taking out the transmission, because I was just going to switch out the transmission or something else, I was like, you know, I'm one mount away from having the engine out. So I just did that, and for like the past two months, I've been riding my bike to and from work, because it's only like two miles, and I fill up a god off of 350. Uh, it's like, I think the dyno numbers are like 385 horsepower, 5800 RPM, 405 foot-pounds of torque. I mean, she's going to scoot. Granny with the rear gear, I don't like the rear gear that I have in it, so it's going to be like a 13 second, low 13 second, high 12 second car, which... You know, I'm going to keep the rear gear in it just because it's going to be gas mileage. Hey, Joe, Joe, I see you behind me. Um, but if I feel like a 373 in it, the car will be fucking fast. But, uh, it's, I mean, it's a built-up Chevy 350. It's 9.71 compression. It's, now, I did leave the cam alone in it. It's got the 300 horse 350 cam in it. That was, like, in the 69 350s and anything else. Just the one thing you see in the high-performance cars back in the 60s. That, which, you know, it's a big cam, and it's got a lot of overlap on it, so, God, it, I love the loaf it's got. But, uh, World Product Heads on it, Elderbrock Performer RPM intake. I mean, I put a lot of work into this engine. The only thing that I'm going to change on it is, oh, there's two things I'm going to change on it. Right now, it's got an Elderbrock 650, uh, 650 CFM Performer carburetor on it. I'm going to go to a Holly on it, just because I like Holly better. And it's got same steel rockers on it. Right now I'm gonna go to a roller rockers like we have on our race car because we have a 10 second cutlass that me and my dad built. Which actually we're finishing up getting ready to get out of track, but it will be a 10 second car. It only weighs 2,700 pounds, and I think it's dynos like five something at the rear wheels, something like that. All I know is it's fucking fast. It's fast enough where I have to have a roll cage and a fire suit. 
I thought fast, dude. I'm the driver, bro. Hell yeah. But, I mean, as you can tell, I love my vehicles. Like, I've been working on cars since basically before I came to Wonka. That's how long I've been turning the wrench. I mean, now when I first started driving and getting a job and anything else going on my own working vehicles, it was actually a big step because even though I worked all that time with my dad on my own vehicles, it was like, you know, when I was working on it, my dad was there. It's like, there's a lot of stuff that I came up upon, like, trying to fix my stuff. Like, how do I fix it? <laughs> yeah. And I did know a lot already. Like, a lot than, more than most people knew, especially at my age. And, you know, it was a big learning experience, and it's kind of like a big maturity hit point, because, like, at the time, I was like, God, I know it all. Like, I can build me an eight second engine, blah, blah, blah. And, I really couldn't at the time. Like, I didn't have all that skill. Because, yeah, I could piece together an eight second engine, but didn't mean I had the ability to tune it or anything else. So, that was kind of like a big slap in the face and you know when I walked into my mechanic job because where I worked not only did we work on vehicles we worked on farm equipment and everything else I worked on everything from a big interna international harvester like huge I mean the dual wheels and everything else about a hundred thousand dollar tractor when it's brand new to lawnmowers and you know that was a good learning experience for me because there's a lot of stuff that he had taught me now when I left that job, it kind of ended on bad blood on both our parts because, you know, at the time I was only working from like 2.30 in the afternoon until 5.30, which, a normal kid, that's that's fine, but, I mean, my insurance was crazy and everything else from that dodge because I was high risk and stuff, and I went back to homeschooling recently like, when I was working at the mechanic job, and he was like, well, when I first got hired, he's like, I can guarantee you work till January. He's like, all right. So March rolled around. And he hires a full-time guy on, and then he's like, well, I need to talk to you. And he's like, I can't, like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I can't afford to have you anymore. I'm going to see what it's like the week without you work, and then I'll call you on Friday and let you know what's going on. Well, he never called me or anything, and then I was, so I was pretty PO'd that he's like, well, I have to let you go because I can't afford uh, to pay an employee or something. And then he brings on a full-time guy that he's paying a lot of money. And I was like, really? And you know what the sad part is? is that even though that full-time guy had a lot of experience with managing and everything, he was a good manager and he's a good guy and he's, he's good at what he does. But with the mechanic stuff, I was a lot better with the mechanical stuff than he was working on anything. So when I was working there, like, he would still send all the stuff my way so his way, but then he started giving me bitch work. And that's when he's like, that, and I was just like, I'm done. And, I mean, I was working two jobs at the time. I was working there at McDonald's because I just couldn't afford the paychecks he was giving me. So, like, for two weeks, I was getting, like, 150 bucks after taxes. Now I was driving a big old Dodge that wasn't getting good math miles. But, um, so, then, ironically, I got my tax of fee job right after that because, like, the guy needed a loader right away. I've known him for 10 years because we always bought our horse food there. I love that job. I'm so glad he hired me and he, he came to me about it. It is an amazingly fun job. I love it. It's hard work and everything else. Like, at the end of the day, when I come home, I'm dead tired and I'm trying to put my cut list together right now. I've been trying to get a transmission in it since Sunday. It is now Thursday and I still haven't gotten in just because I'm, I mean, that's how kind of tired I am. But, um, I wouldn't trade this job for the world. I love it. Well, that's a little bit about me, because my time's getting up here now. I'm like 13.50 right now, and yeah, that's a little bit too much time. Um, but yeah, that's just a little bit more about me. Um, hopefully, I'm with Connor this weekend, and he can give you like his intro and anything else, so you can get a little bit more about him. Um, I don't know what flavor dip I'm going to get next. Let's do a little bit of review. But I do like this Copenhagen original. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here, because I want to get this under 15 minutes. So I can make sure it gets up on YouTube. Uh, yeah, this is Michael Subconner. I'm Michael. You learned a little bit more about me. This is Joy. She's my girl. I love her. That baby girl. And Connor, you're Michael.